Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Um, you know, while I'm here working on some of my uh, electrification projects, uh, I wanted to take some time out uh, to talk about something that I've seen being discussed and I, I just kind of want to maybe level set and share my thoughts on it. Um, but what I'm starting to see more of, and this is unfortunate, is a sort of hierarchy in charging speeds, right, um, with different EVs and, you know, certain EV owners who maybe get 800 volt uh, charging electric uh, vehicles wanting to have sort of first dibs at the faster charging stations, in particular, Electrify America, uh, they tend to put in 350 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt chargers. And these owners of these faster charging vehicles, whether it's uh, Lucid Air, it's the, um, you know, the Audi e-tron GT, the Porsche Taycan, or even the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6, soon to be GM uh, Hummer EV is going to be a lot more prevalent on the roads. Uh, some of these owners are saying, well, you shouldn't be using the 350 kilowatt chargers if you don't have an 800 volt uh, EV. And this is fundamentally wrong for several reasons that I wanted to talk about. Um, and some of it is being reinforced, I feel like, by some automotive journalists whom they themselves maybe don't, don't realize or, um, you know, just get mixed up in the facts. Uh, you know, Jeff from uh, Electric Revs even had to correct me on one of my videos where I was mistaken in the number of modules that were available in some of the 150 kilowatt chargers because these small details actually make a huge difference for a number of vehicles even beyond you know beyond the 800 volt charging EV so say something like the Kia EV6 uh, where it can utilize a faster than a 400 or 500 volt charger uh, it's still current limited, right? So even going on a 350 kilowatt charger, it won't be maxing out that 350 kilowatt charger, but it's because there's a balance between voltage and current and how much these chargers can provide in terms of current at one voltage is different than how much they can provide at a different voltage. And uh, one of the big disconnects, I think, especially in this is North America really specific at this point, is that Almost every charger that's faster than 50 kilowatts in North America uh, or the 62.5 kilowatts in North America is a 1,000 volt capable, essentially. So all it is is it's a matter of switching the charging modules around. If you pretend for a second that these LFP cells are charging modules, what happens is each one of these charging modules provides a set amount of current at a set amount of voltage. Uh, and most of the 150 kilowatt chargers only have three of these modules, whereas the 350 kilowatt chargers tend to have six of the modules, right? And so what this allows for is uh, these 350 kilowatt chargers can provide up to 350 to 375 amps all the way up to a thousand volts or 920 volt, 950 volt, depends on the charger. But some of the 150 kilowatt chargers have four modules and they can provide close to 500 amps. Whereas most of them, like I said, only have three. And that's a really important number because the CCS standard allows for 500 amps. So when you have a vehicle like the Cadillac Lyric that can accept 500 amps, it will only see its 190 kilowatt peak charging speed if it's using a 350 kilowatt charger because those 150 kilowatt chargers do not have enough modules to support that full um, that full charging speed of the Cadillac Lyric. They don't have the 500 amps. Uh, Kyle uh, Connor from uh, Out of Spec Motoring, actually, he, he recently had to go to one of the GM-funded Ultium Ready EV Go sites in Colorado because the Electrify America 350 kilowatt chargers weren't supplying the full 500 amps that the Mercedes EQS that he was testing 
was accepting. So um, this is a real issue where um, some even non 800 volt EVs see a massive advantage by switching from a 150 kilowatt charger to a 350 kilowatt charger. So even at a base fundamental level, right, it's incorrect to say that 350 kilowatt chargers should be reserved for the 800 volt vehicles. So that just put that out of your mind. Now, that being said, the charging speed between 150 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt for some of these faster charging 800 volt EVs can be significant. But what I go by is more of the age old rule of first come, first served. So it doesn't matter if someone at a grocery store only has 10 items and you have 20 items. If you are in line before them, you check out before them. It doesn't matter if someone at a restaurant takes less time to eat their meal than you do. If you sat down before them, the waiter takes your order before they take that other person's order, right? So this is just a common accepted practice that regardless of how much time you are going to take using a particular resource, um, you know, the, the person who's there first accesses that resource first. This is, the, you know, so now there is reason, right? When I was charging at an Electrify America charger and the Lucid Air testing team came back from a track and I was plugged into the 350 kilowatt charger, I offered to unplug early to let them use it. Um, they didn't think it was a big deal uh, at the time, but that offer sort of stood because I felt like it was the courteous thing to do since I didn't really even need to charge or whatever. But if the charging station is full and you're in a 50 kilowatt charging EV and you got there first and you plug in and there's only a 350 kilowatt charger left, you shouldn't have to unplug to let another car go before you and then plug in. That doesn't make sense. I don't think that's reasonable, right? So if it isn't an inconvenience and you feel nice, feel free to move and offer up the spot. Um, but if I come to a charging station and there are two chargers left, Electrify America in particular, and there's one 350 kilowatt and then one 150 kilowatt with a Chatamo head, I am going to take the 350 kilowatt charger in my Chevy Bolt EV that only peak charges at 55 kilowatts every single time. And the reason for that is if a Porsche Taycan pulls in behind me, well, they can still access a 150 kilowatt charger with the Chatamo head. Now they won't be charging as fast as they would on the 350 kilowatt charger, but they're going to be charging a whole lot faster than if a Nissan Leaf owner pulled in and they're looking at an empty 350 kilowatt charging stall that they can't use and an occupied Chatamo charging stall that they can't. So for me, I look at it a little bit more holistically. What, it, what can I do to leave the most access to the most EV owners um, in the most convenient way possible? And so that's kind of what drives my decision. Now, if I have a choice between a 150 and a 350 kilowatt charger in a charging station that's completely empty, does it even matter? What's the likelihood that one, if not two, faster charging EVs are going to pull in in the 30 minutes that I'm there. And I want to call that number out because to me, that's the most important number of all. Most of these charging stations are now located at stores and restaurants. And these are businesses with typical dwell times of 30 to 45 minutes or more. So what we should be focusing on is the charging speeds and the charging times really need to match the location, right? The, the business venue, the host site. And that's why I've never really felt inconvenienced traveling with a Chevrolet Bolt EV. By the time I finish using the bathroom, grabbing things from the store, getting back to the charger, I'm actually ready to go again, right? It's not like I don't have to rush, I don't have to run in, but I, I also can't really dawdle because 
Otherwise, I'm just wasting my own time. So really what we need to start looking at is looking at these charging stations as what would be your typical you know, stopping time. Now, if someone ever does build and it's starting to look <laughs> unlikely, if someone ever does build a dedicated travel charger that the only sole purpose is to get there, plug in, recharge as fast as possible and move on, then yes, of course, I'm going to use or prioritize slower chargers um, if I don't need the faster charging speed or my car can't take it. But this idea that we need to, to say you can use this charger and you can't use that charger, I fundamentally disagree with, like I said, for multiple reasons. Um, it's, a, it's a resource that can do up to a certain amount, but if you're there first, you get access to it, right? Um, and so I, I think we need to make sure that we're not making people feel bad about using a resource like this. It's confusing to people who are new to EVs. Um, there's no reason to be yelling at or being aggravated with new EV owners who maybe don't know better. Uh, the, the more important thing to me is, and this is what I've heard, is people who are plugged in and charging all the way to full and leaving their car even after it stopped charging, that sort of thing. Those are problems, or even worse, still EV owners who are parking in a charging stall because it's a charging stall, not because they're plugged in and charging. Again, that's a bigger issue. Um, and it can still be addressed courteously, uh, but it, those things I think are far more important. So again, if I'm driving a Lucid Air and I really need to charge and I pull into an Electrify America charger and both 350 kilowatt chargers are occupied by Chevy Bolt EVs, what did that really cost me? 15 minutes maybe, tops, after I've already been driving for hours? It's just not that big of a deal. Um, and uh, it, it would be far worse to pull in and have no chargers available because multiple EVs are pulled into charging stalls and not plugged in at all. That's more problematic. Um, but like I said, I mean, eventually, maybe these charging providers will catch on anyway and they'll be better about sort of matching the, the speeds of their chargers to the site locations. I know those Ultium Ready EV Go sites are a mixture of 100 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt kind of for that purpose. They want to give everybody options while also matching the, the needs of the location. Frankly, I think Electrify America, you know, a lot of their city locations are now 150 kilowatt only. I think that's fine. If you're if you're at a grocery store, do you really need to be in and out in less than 30 minutes? Um, whereas I think Electrify America needs to work on their highway locations, right? If you're going to stop at the the Fireball um, Shell station with six chargers there off of I-5, every single one of those chargers should be 350 kilowatt, in my opinion. Um, same with uh, some of the other gas stations where Electrify America has deployed chargers. These 50 kilowatt chargers at gas stations and convenience stores make zero sense. But if they're at a grocery store, sure, 150 is fine. If they're on a grocery store off of a freeway, half and half, 350 and 150 kilowatt is fine. But just be cognizant of the use case for the, the location and match the charging speeds to and the expected the expected charging times to the expected dwell time. So anyway, that's uh, all I really wanted to say about that is just don't try to avoid being elitist about who can and should be using, um, you know, different speed chargers, right? That was one of the most damaging things uh, that came out of the Tesla community in terms of uh, EV adoption was this idea that uh, non-Tesla EVs shouldn't be allowed to use the supercharger uh, because they charge slower. Um, they charge slower in kilowatts, but the average time spent charging was roughly the same between a Model S and a Nissan Leaf or a Chevrolet Bolt EV. So why, why the exclusion? Why, why the differentiation? It was a sort of a classist approach uh, to charging infrastructure, which I don't think is appropriate. 
um, or helpful or useful in any way. So I'd love to hear what you think. What have your experiences been on the road? Have you had a chance uh, to use some of these faster charging sites along travel routes? Do you have a faster charging EV? And what has your experience has been? Um, I mean, heck, a lot of people have reported that they don't get their stated speed out of a lot of these public chargers anyway. So does it really matter if you're charging at 100 kilowatts on a 150 kilowatt or charging at 100 kilowatts on a 350 kilowatt charger? I don't know that the difference really matters that much. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, uh, what your experiences have been, and uh, thank you for watching.